Okay, just give me a minute here, guys, while I adjust the camera. Hold on, let's see. Why is it taking it doing that? There we go. Now I got a little bit of a better frame. Okay, so I'm just going to give a few minutes for people to get here. And actually, while well, you guys are coming in, hey, three of you already, I'm just going to, hey, Doc, how's it going? I'm just going to quickly grab a blade forums discussion that I want to use in this video at some point. Uh, it was a really humorous discussion, and I actually wanted to make a whole video about it. Hey, how's it going? Uh, okay, good. I've got the discussion open that I want to have. Let me just grab it on my other window here that has my notes in it. Okay, so uh, what I want to start with tonight, guys, is... Sorry, I just had to shut the door so we don't get any interruptions by uh, my kids who are running around the house right now. Sorry about that. I bumped the tripod. Okay, so I wanted to have a little discussion about, uh, first of all, I've got some sweet knives here on the table. Uh, let me pull those out so you can kind of see everything. Let's move this back and move this down. There we go. All right, so I've got a couple of knives here that I think are worth talking about because of the fact that um, if you look at them on paper, you, you may not get a full appreciation for the knife. On the other hand, there are a lot of knives where Honestly, I do think you get a pretty good handle on what this knife is about just by, you know, looking at the description on Blade HQ. I'd love to hear you guys weigh in on this. You know, how many knives or, or what features, I guess, do you think you can kind of look at and go, yeah, that knife is not for me. Hey, how's it going? <clears throat> Thanks for checking in. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, I'm going to tell you about this one in particular. Hey, how's it going? Uh, this is the Bark River Tusk. This is such a cool little fixed blade. Uh, <clears throat> and when I first got this knife, this is this this is part of what is spurring this discussion. I kind of looked at it, and if you look here, thanks, man. I'm glad you like the vids. Um, if you kind of look at the blade here, do, does it, anybody else watching feel like this knife look like looks like it's going to be just thick and you know like it won't slice that well and I kind of you know I kind of thought this would be limited that way when I first got it uh, but I have done a lot of cutting with this and I think it's just because of the way they do the convex grind yeah it does right uh, this slices way way better than I anticipated and that just kind of shows you know when you look at this in pictures you go man that's a thick blade I don't think it's going to cut very well or I don't think it's going to slice very well uh, but because the convex grind is so gentle, because it's so thin behind the edge, and that's one thing that I really, really like. Take a look. I don't know if I can get this to focus properly. Hold on. Come on. There we go. Uh, if you look at the edge on this, it's ridiculous how thin it is. And that's one of the things I really like. The, the convex grinds that Bark River does, they seem to consistently get really, really thin. Uh, no, I have never tried a, a sax. Uh, yeah, great blade shape. Uh, and so because they're so thin right behind the cutting edge, they bite into material like crazy. Now, obviously there's more of an, of an adventure. Wow. Obviously there's more of an advantage to that in let's say carving wood. So if you're carving with this, you're gonna bite into that material like right away. And that's really, really cool but it also serves really well in other EDC type tasks. I can't tell you how many things I've gone to cut with this. Uh, the other day, uh, what was I opening? Anyway, it was one of those really tough clamshell packages and this like just shredded it better than anything I've ever used to cut a clamshell package because the tip down here is just so sharp and so thin that it just goes through like a laser beam. And Honestly, looking at this in pictures and even on camera this way, it's really hard to see that. It's really hard to get a sense for that. And so there are some features that are just really hard to kind of get a feel for. Now, let me quickly run through the things that, you know, right away I can kind of gauge whether or not I'm going to like this. Okay, overall size is a big one for me and handle size is a big one for me. Uh, I cannot stand a knife that doesn't give me, you know, a nice 
four finger grip. So, you know, this is really, really good. Uh, most of the knives, well, all the knives I have here, because all the knives that I keep are really good full gripped knives. I really don't like knives that don't give me a full grip. And I can get a pretty good sense for that, honestly, just off a website, right? And, and I think most of you would agree with that. You can go, yeah, okay, how long is the handle? And you kind of go, okay, well, you know, if I know this handle is five inches long and you lose a little bit for this and a little bit for that, then I'm gonna have a good four and a half inches of, wow, Kevin, stop kicking the tripod. Then you kind of know I'm gonna have, yeah, I love the Crooked River. Uh, the This backspacer is my only issue right now and it's gotta be, and, and honestly with the orange here, the orange kind of goes. But once I got rid of the orange uh, collars there, you, the, the definitely uh, the orange here has to be carried, got, gotten rid of. Uh, so, <clears throat> sorry, getting back to uh, the focus. Uh, so you can honestly, at this point, I've handled enough knives, I've done this long enough that I can read a description of an awful lot of knives and right away have a really, really good idea of, <clears throat> I know I've thought about dying it, Frank. Um, and yeah, the um, the Maven should go in the mail tomorrow. That's my plan, uh, Tuesday at the latest. Anyway, yes, a custom uh, a CF backspacer, a carbon fiber backspacer would be awesome. Uh, anyway, I've really thought about dying it and I've seriously considered that and I still may, but I'd prefer to have something else in there. We'll see what I end up doing with it. Uh, I'm still kind of weighing some options and, and waiting and hopefully somebody will decide they ought to start making uh, those backspacers. Sadly, for those of you watching, if you're wondering about this, I did specifically email Benchmade and said like, you know, you guys are already doing the custom hardware. So I know you've got in a, where, in a drawer somewhere, a bunch of colored backspacers. Can't you just sell me one? <laughs> and they said, no. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I, I could understand why Rob went with the brown, given the uh, the orange color there. Hold on. Do you guys feel like you're on a boat? There we go. <clears throat> oh, you dyed your cur. Uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, so let me get back to, to what I was talking about. Um, so yeah, there are a lot of things. Edge length, okay? Uh, whether it's a hollow grind or not. I definitely prefer hollow grinds to flat grinds. A uh, flat grind, I feel like I'm taking more of a... <clears throat> more of a chance. With a hollow grind, you pretty well know you're gonna get nice and thin behind the edge and it's gonna slice pretty well. With a flat grind, it really depends on how each individual company has ground that knife. And I've had knives that, you know, on paper, and even when you look at the blade stock, they're pretty thin and on paper you feel like this knife should slice like crazy, but then when you actually get it, eh, you know, it just doesn't do it because they haven't got the edge geometry right. <clears throat> so edge geometry is one of those things uh, you really have to try. Uh, is the 393 any good? Uh, short answer is yes. I'll have a lot more to say. I really like this blade. Uh, you guys are getting totally off topic here, guys. Uh, I really like this blade shape. Um, it's it's thin enough behind the edge. It's still a ZT, okay? It's, it's uh, pretty thick, but Oh man, I love, I don't know. Am I wrong guys? Does that blade look awesome or not? Uh, I will say I wasn't a fan of the clip, so I've switched out. I had this for my, my XM18. So you can see I put the factory clip back on the XM18. I've got the, the blue aftermarket clip over here. I'm gonna do something else. Maybe I'll put a bronze clip on this guy to match with the, the, back, uh, with the standoffs there. Uh, anyway, yeah, I really like it. And has anybody else who's had one of these, who's had, I'm sorry, has anybody else who's had the 0392? Frank, if you're still in here, uh, go ahead and weigh in. I feel like the ergos on this uh, might be better than the original, all right? Um, I know a lot of people, uh, you know, don't love the sort of overlays here. I'm not crazy about the look. I don't know. I, I'm still a little undecided. I think in the right material, that would look pretty awesome. <clears throat> anyway, let's get back to what we were talking about here, which was features that you can pretty well get a handle on on paper, and then features that you really need to get a knife in hand in order to figure it out. Okay, so... <clears throat> As I said, size and weight, you can pretty well tell on paper. A knife that's really thick, if it says that the knife is, you know, three quarters of an inch thick, well, you know that's not going to sit in your pocket really easily, right? You can know that kind of going in. However, 
uh, the, the texture on the G10, that's not something you're going to be able to get a good handle on. So some knives may, you know, you may pick it up. Uh, here's a good example. So this knife looks pretty heavily textured. This is the Manly Peak. And <clears throat> on camera, you guys can probably see that textured G10 and go, man, that could be pretty sharp texturing, but it's actually fairly smooth and therefore goes in and out of pocket pretty nicely. But G10 varies, yeah, as you say, the G10 varies quite a bit. So you get it in hand and you're like, oh, I mean, it's, it's rough enough to be grippy, but uh, it actually goes in and out of pocket really nicely. By the way, this was a good example of this. So look, at, this looks pretty slim. And when I first got this out of the box, I was like, yee, that might not fit in like say 5.11s or anything with a thicker pocket, but it actually fits really, really well. <clears throat> so, uh, all I'm saying, I, I, <laughs> I said all of that to point out that I, at this point, I feel like I can get a pretty good idea about whether or not I'm going to like a knife, whether or not I want to give it a try, okay? <clears throat> and, you know, I can, I've, I'm fairly confident. The odd time, and it really is an odd time that I'll get a knife that I really actually don't like, that I thought I would love, okay? But it's really rare at this point. Uh, <clears throat> there are times I get a knife that it's the other way, okay, where I thought I would hate it and I basically just knew you guys would be curious about it or I borrowed it from someone um, <clears throat> or, you know, it's it was, you know, on a really, really good discount. So I thought, you know what, I'll pick one up and review it. And then it comes and it's like, amazing <laughs> okay those are awesome <laughs> i gotta love those days and i'm sure all of you do too yeah those are the pitfalls of online shopping uh by the way i will say this as a bit of an aside i have had the best luck with 511s i wear 34 and if i order a 34 34 in 511 pants they always fit so i i kind of love that <clears throat> Now, I want to go on to another discussion here, guys, and, you know, you guys feel free to weigh in as we're going along, but, you know, I'm of the mind that my knife needs to kind of do pretty well all the things that I want my knife to do, uh, so I know that sounds really obvious, but um, I don't like to, you know, divide my knives up into all kinds of different purposes, all right, so I don't like, you know, having my EDC knife and then I'm going to have a tactical knife and I'm going to have a, a skinning knife and I'm going to have a survival knife and I'm going to have a gentleman's knife and on and on and on the list would go. Uh, by the way, yeah, just for uh, Airy W there, I'm wearing the Ridgeline, the 511 Ridgeline pants right now and I love them. They're the fav my favorite 511 pants ever. I know I haven't reviewed them yet. Um, I've had them for a while. I'll get to it soon. Uh, I do want to talk about them. But anyway, back to the point I'm trying to make. Um, I like knives that are pretty versatile, okay, that I don't feel like I have to, like, you know, sort of gauge what's going on and say, well, you know, this knife is okay as long as I'm only going to church, but if I decide to go, you know, shopping or out for lunch after church, I'm going to need a different knife. I want to have a knife that I can pretty much be confident is going to handle whatever's going on uh, that day. I like to have quite a broad, you know, cross-section of abilities all right now that means some knives work really well for that and others not so much all right so let's let's for example pick up this knife this is a great edc fixed blade it would also work really well as a skinning knife it would okay you could question maybe a little more of a belly or maybe a little more of an upturned point here but honestly <clears throat> it's not too bad the my lurch is for church i love that it rhymes <laughs> Um, but you know, here's a knife that, yeah, it's a really, really nice EDC knife. I really like carrying this. Um, but could you skin an animal with this? Absolutely. Right. No problem whatsoever. Uh, on the other hand, now I wouldn't recommend skinning an animal with almost any folding knife. Uh, I will make one exception and that is I have filleted fish with a recon one before, uh, and that's because there's enough blade there that I can keep all the fish guts sort of away from the pivot. I can do all the cutting out near the end of the blade and have no problems with that. Uh, so there are there are some exceptions, you know, to what you can do with a folder. Rec generally speaking, you know, if you're going to get dirt and gunk and blood and guts and everything I involved, then go with a fixed blade. <clears throat> so uh, that's my take. By the way, I also feel like there's a lot of knives. So, you know, the Recon 1, you know, nice, wow, Recon 1, 
The Crooked River, really nice as an EDC blade. Ah, uh, maybe a little bit big, but could this be a defensive blade as well? Of course it could, right? Now, I guess that's one thing that almost anything with a cutting edge could be a defensive tool. Hopefully it never would be because, yikes, you know, uh, a knife in a fight, just those are two, two things you don't want to hear in the same sentence. But anyway, uh, I, I like to EDC knives that I feel like I can do just about anything with, uh, with, with some exceptions, okay? I, I, as I say, I'm not going to go and skin a deer with a folder, but otherwise, I like to feel pretty confident that most things I can do. Yeah, that's right. No winners in a knife fight. Um, or I've heard the saying that the winner of a knife fight just dies in the ambulance on the way to the hospital. <clears throat> uh, so... Wanted to get all that stuff out of the way. The next thing I want to do is something a little bit more, hopefully, fun and interesting. I've got here, let me get to the right page on uh, Blade Forms and I'll bring the tablet in. Hopefully, this is going to focus on the tablet enough that you can read it. Now, does zooming in work? Uh, no, it doesn't. Okay, maybe I'll just hold this up a little bit. Uh, somebody let me know if you can read this or not. If you can read this, uh, if not, I'll read some of it for you. Uh, but this is a, <clears throat> no, can't read it. Crap. That's really annoying. Uh, maybe if I turn the tablet this way. Hopefully, maybe that'll work. If I put it all the way down, I know it's going to be annoying. Now the print's going to be too small. There's no winning here. I don't know what to do. All right, I'll just have to tell you guys about this. <laughs> Please read it. It's a bit out of focus. Yeah, I will read it. Okay, so slightly changed opinion of Kaiser. This is a thread from Blade Forums. And it it initially was in Good, Bad, and Ugly. I guess that's where it still is. But what it what happened was this guy comes on and, and says, you know, he's a little frustrated because he went to sell a Kaiser on the forums and <laughs> he couldn't sell it. No one would buy it for the price that he was asking. That's never happened to any of us, right guys? Uh, and so he goes on the forums and he says, this should be Kaiser's new slogan. When you buy a Kaiser, you're buying a knife for life, dot, 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 or long pause, because no one on the forums will ever buy it from you if you don't like it. Okay, so that's how he starts the thread. And initially it's just, you know, he's gonna complain about Kaiser. Well, what very quickly happens is <laughs> somebody comes along, uh, this, uh, this one member, hey, how's it going? Uh, Gun Cotton One. Uh, <laughs> somebody comes along and instead of going along with his original plan for the thread, which was complaining about Kaiser's resale value, uh, he comes in and starts making up slogans for knife companies. Okay, Strider, put a bigger stop pin in it. Chris Reeve, we make great, cool, uh, damn good Kool-Aid. Hinderer, Real Men, Wrist Flick. Uh, and it just gets better and better from there, guys. H how many of you, did anyone see this thread? If you haven't, you should go over to Blade Forms and check it out. It's hilarious. So I start reading this thread and I'm like, this is great. And of course, uh, I started sharing some of the, the threads with friends. Uh, Quartermaster, made in the USA. So these are all slogans, proposed slogans for, <laughs> yeah, these are proposed slogans for knife companies. Uh, Chavez Knives, 35 spots at $25. Uh, Microtech, that design is public property. <laughs> uh, Quartermaster, made in the USA. <laughs> That's their slogan. It just gets better and better. Uh, survive Knives, What Knives. Um, Bussy, uh, Bring Your Own Sheath. And so there's tons of these just hilarious slogans that various people are suggesting for. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I'll put the link in the description box to this video, by the way, since you guys are asking for it. Um, and, and so it just goes on and on. And I'm reading this laughing my head off. And I'm like, this is awesome. And as I'm going along, uh, of course, I had to weigh in with a couple of slogans myself and uh, our good buddy Nick weighed in somewhere here. And so we were having a ball and everyone was laughing. But here's what happened. About page four, things just kind of fall apart here. All right. So we get to page four and somebody, you know, is offended because everyone's picking on whatever their favorite knife company is. It's I, I, somebody says something bad about Kaiser and then someone says, you know, to the original poster, like you're an idiot, you shouldn't, like why would you even try to, 
you know, complain about not being able to sell the knife, the price, the knife for the price you want it for. And it just kind of falls apart. People start, uh, you know, making fun of each other and giving each other a hard time. And so what started out as this great, hilarious thread that I was absolutely enjoying just kind of goes off the rails <laughs> and, and becomes like a total fail. All right. Uh, I would still recommend reading the first part of the thread. It's super funny. It really is. Uh, and, there, you know, there's way more way more uh, slogans than, than I want to go through with you here. But it, it does kind of fall apart. Yeah, I know. You can hurt people's feelings. Typical forum crap. And that's exactly where I was going with this next. So, the this kind of be betrays one of the issues with Blade forums. Uh, in, in other forums as well, is people feel like, I don't even know what they feel like. <laughs> you know, it's somewhere between they they don't, they, they invest too much and too little all at once, if that's possible, right? What I mean by they invest too much is their their feelings are too invested and so they get hurt and offended. Uh, CRKT, are, oh, I can't see it, I'm sorry. My, the the tripod setup I'm using is obscuring the, the part of the screen. Anyway. Uh, oh, Medford folders. I'll, I'll give you this one. Medford, indestructible folders, uh, asterisk, any use voids warranty. Uh, so the thread goes on like this and it's hilarious for like the per first three, four pages. And then it just kind of falls apart and people are mad at each other and they're getting, they're getting very serious and, and it just kind of starts to suck after that. So let's, let's get out of this. I'm going to move the, the tablet out of the way since it didn't work anyway. I could have just read you this stupid thing, but <clears throat> our steel is solid as a sock. <laughs> okay. So uh, one of the things with online forums is uh, people are idiots. And uh, let me let me give a shout out while we're on here. Let me give a shout out to Canadian Knife and Gear. Uh, really good group of guys. And, you know, people bring up stuff all the time that can be pretty controversial. You know, they'll pick on a favorite brand. They will complain about, you know, poor performance. They'll do all kinds of things that... Uh, you know, in another forum would just be like a time bomb, okay? You just know that it's it's going to be a fight any minute now. Uh, on Canadian Knife and Gear, I've seen really strong differences where people totally disagree and they go back and forth making point and counterpoint for a long time and they never get to the point where they're being idiots and where the moderators have to shut things down. And that, that says a lot about the guys in that... Uh, particular on that Facebook group, I will say. Um, <clears throat> for some reason, Blade Forums has a bit of a... They're Canadian. Yes, that's right. <laughs> they're Canadian. Um, Blade Forums has a bit of a toxicity to it. And so, I don't know. I, I don't want to, you know, crap all over them or anything too much. But I honestly, at this point, pretty much see Blade Forums as a marketplace and you know a place to get some good information right i don't see it as much of a community anymore uh <clears throat> and i will say if you go on blade forums and say the wrong thing forget it right you are going to get just like this flood of stupidity coming at you so <clears throat> don't feed the trolls anywhere yeah that's true now guys can i uh, you know this is going to be confession time here since we're we're live and and only everyone on the internet can see this. Um, I will admit that the odd time I'll go on Blade Forums and say something, uh, <laughs> Will Moon, <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, go on Blade Forums and bring up Will Moon or Gonzo. <laughs> yeah. Or, you know, some thread suggesting that Sabenzas are not the greatest knives ever in existence. And just watch the, the anarchy ensue, okay? And I know that's a bit of a troll move, but every once in a while, I, I just feel like I want to go on Blade Forums and stir the pot a little bit. I, I don't do it very often, okay? I really don't. But I, I may just make a comment that's questioning sort of the, the conventional Blade Forums wisdom every once in a while. And heaven forbid you do that, because all of Blade Forums somehow gets a secret, they must have like a secret bat signal that goes up and it's like, someone disagrees with us, everyone go. 
Uh, they don't need stirring now, that's true. Anyway, let's get back to, so now that we've talked about that, uh, I want to talk about a couple other things, and then I'm probably going to shut things down. We've been going for 25 minutes. I know some guys go live for, you know, a long time. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but usually I can't get into that because I don't have that much time to sit there. Uh, so, let me go back to a lot the last couple of points that I wanted to talk about. And... <clears throat> Well, I'm kind of wrapping things up here, I do want to open it up for you guys to ask any questions or make any comments that you guys want to make. So, a couple of quick points I want to touch on. Uh, I will say this. Can you show the knife in your... Yeah. Hilarious. Um, so, I, I do want to say this. Uh, I, probably, I, I'm... You know, maybe I'm overly stereotyping here. I've been turned by forums. They're full of snobby snobs and are about pricing and blame. Yeah, some forums are, are kind of negative. I, I don't think that I want to write off all forums yet. And even Blade forums. I, you know, every second day or so, I do check it out. Uh, show your face. I've seen your, you've seen my face probably dozens of times. I'm not going to switch the camera around now because the uh, camcorder I'm using is completely backwards. <clears throat> But if you go back to any of my old videos, I always did them sitting in front of the camera the way like Prepared Mind 101 does. So you're more than welcome to do that. I still do knife news videos usually in front of the camera. So uh, my face is no big secret. It's not like uh, Nick Shabazz. <clears throat> so is Kevin. Oh yeah, so is Kevin. Yeah, I can be a bit of a knife snob, guys. I love this thing. It is absolutely beautiful. Uh, definitely one of my favorite knives. Certainly, uh, it was on my list of the best knives for 2017. <clears throat> and I absolutely adore it. And yeah, the, the carbon fiber scales are really, really nice. Uh, so, but I wanted to bring up here just a little bit of gun stuff, guys. Do we have any shooters here? Uh, I've got to say, I really like shooting. And, uh, you know... <clears throat> Uh, are pocket knives going to come black market? I would say no. Okay. One, I think there's there's enough pushback right now that I don't think we're going to see this import deal last for all that long. All right. I really don't. Um, <clears throat> and number two, the, the criminal code of Canada has not changed. Okay. So that means none of these knives, although some of these knives would not get across the border very easily, none of them are actually illegal to own or carry. Uh, okay, so we got a couple of shooters here. Anyway, I'm just going to let you guys know, I got a, a, an M&P 9 2.0 recently. And, well, not that recently, actually. I've had it for almost eight months, but I'd only put like 200 rounds through it. Uh, recently, I've been able to get to the range a few more times, and I'm getting close to 1,000 rounds now through it. And I love that gun more and more with, uh, with the more. The more I shoot it, it just, yeah, I absolutely uh, enjoy it. <clears throat> Now, I will say this. I've taken a few different... Uh, what Spyderco is that? Oh, it's not a Spyderco. I know. Look, guys. So, the focus... I'm a little bit far away from these knives, but hopefully you can read Manly right there. So, this is the Manly... Hold on. My piles of stuff around here are falling over. This is the Manly Peak. I recently did a first impressions video on it, but I do really like it. Hey, who, hey Boo. How's it going? Um, yeah, so not a Spyderco at all. Um, and I will discuss that a little more when I get into uh, the full review. I've never owned a Glock. I've shot a few Glocks, and I definitely don't mind them. Um, I feel like I like the ergonomics better on my M&P 9. I also, the other thing I want to say here is, I've taken a few new shooters with me, and consistently, anyone who's new, um, they can be more accurate more quickly with my 1911 than they can with the MMP. I don't know what it is about the MMP that people struggle with, but for some reason, even though the caliber is smaller, it's lighter to shoot, like for, you know, everything on paper, everyone should handle the MMP better, but no one does. Everyone shoots the, the uh, 1911 better. Uh, MMP grips are not my favorite. Yeah, they're maybe not the net best. I know, guns are terrible, guys. They cost a lot more than knives. I don't know if you've noticed that, uh, but being into guns, you know, <laughs> Though the and the ammo costs a lot of money as well. Like every weekend, there's a new knife down the drain. <laughs> yeah, 1911. There's a fight. That's right. Uh, <clears throat> you can go to the range with your Sabenza in your pocket, 
and your 1911 in your holster and you know you just know that you have the very best tools in the world on you at that time and you know you'll get in a fight with anyone who disagrees with you uh i i agree i think the mmp 2.0 is better than the uh I think the MMP 2.0 is better than any Glock that I've tried. Now, I'll be honest, guys. I haven't tried every Glock. In fact, I haven't tried very many Glocks. I've shot a 17 and a 19, and that's it. <clears throat> uh, so, I can't speak to all, but uh, I certainly love my MMP uh, 9. Anyway, let's let's wrap this thing back up, guys, and, and finish off by saying this one thing. If you're watching um, and you're not in Canada, or even if you were, you're watching and you are in Canada, you know the import stuff is going on and it's a real bad deal. Um, so right now what CBSA is doing, that's Canadian Border Services, they're basically stopping almost any one-handed opening knife. Like technically the way they say it, this knife should come through no problem, but at this point you really don't even know if this is going to get through. Okay, so what is happening is there is a lawyer in Toronto who is going to challenge the, the CBSA ruling, or I mean the CITT, that's Canadian International Trade Tribunal ruling. She's gonna challenge that ruling constitutionally. And when she does, <clears throat> I'm in the UK, everything is illegal here. <laughs> Even knives with green handles. You could take all these knives and they'd be fine, but man, if you put a green handle on it, they will arrest you in the UK. Uh, so, <clears throat> I guess I should be thankful for small blessings. Uh, so coming back now to the point I was making, guys, there's a GoFundMe campaign to cover the legal fees for this lawyer. I will put a link in the description box down below. And if you can help in any way, even if it's just to share the GoFundMe campaign, if you've got a couple bucks you can throw at it, um, that would be a huge, huge help. All right. <clears throat> uh, because it's really, really a pain in the neck. Um, yeah, I hope the GoFundMe works out as well. But yeah, it's a huge pain to be restricted in that way. And yeah, it is so frustrating and really misguided, okay, for what they're trying to do. Lastly, let me uh, <clears throat> let me uh, share two quick things. One, uh, I've been talking about Canadian knife makers. And so if you know of some good Canadian knife makers put them down in the comments below or just comment right now. These will all be saved so people can see them later. Uh, yeah, she is a good lawyer too. 11 out of 11 cases, that's pretty awesome. Um, <clears throat> I was talking with Alex over at Knife News about that and uh, it's pretty exciting. It looks very hopeful. Uh, yeah, North Arms Knives, good example. Um, <laughs> just don't try to go and buy a ska from their website. If, if even the 30 people watching this video go over there, I think the website will crash. Um, I'm hoping that I can get my hands on a Skaha for review whenever this current run starts shipping. I've got somebody who's willing to lend me one. <clears throat> Finally, the last thing I want to talk about is a pretty fun video that I've got coming up. And any... Uh, you need to fill out a form at this point. Okay, there you go. Uh, and so the, the last point I want to make here is... Um, I've got a fun video. It's gonna be more of a comedic video, but I'd love to get your feedback for it. I'm gonna talk about knives that you probably shouldn't buy, but will anyway, okay? Knives that you probably shouldn't buy, but you will anyway. So I'd love to hear your suggestions. I'd love to hear your uh, golf knives. I'll sell it to you, 300 bucks, there you go. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, sorry. Um, but I'd love to hear your suggestions for knives that you probably shouldn't buy, but you will anyway. Uh, that's that's going to just be one of those more comedic style videos. It should be a lot of fun, and hopefully it'll poke a little bit of fun at all of our obsession here. Before I go, let me just quickly open up all of these knives for you, because I know I haven't opened some, and sometimes somebody's watching saying, I just wanted to see that one knife, and the bozo left it sitting there through the whole video. So... Let's uh, quickly get these all open. Uh, by the way, a couple of these I have toyed with the action a little. Um, so, <clears throat> what do we got here? So, XM18, Fatty, Warncliffe. Uh, this is a Bark River Tusk. This is the new version of the Tusk for this year. Uh, this is the uh, JX6. This is one of those Chris Tanner knives. Um, I'm not a huge fan of Chris Tanner, but I am a pretty big fan of this knife. It's really well done, and it's CPM 154, which is great. Uh, you know, 
Uh, the A2 version would be fine as well, but I'm pretty happy that I got the, the CPM 154 version. This, of course, is the Steelcraft Bodega, one of my favorite knives in existence. Up here we have a ZT, this is the 0055. Really, really nice knife. Um, by the way, a little bit nicer since I cleaned it and oiled it recently. I would actually like to trade this knife. So if someone watching out there has a 0920 and you'd like to trade, hit me up. Uh, this, of course, is the Swish from Willamette Cutlery. Totally epic knife. This is awesome, awesome knife. Uh, let's quickly switch over to this side. Uh, this, of course, is the new ZT. A number of you have probably already seen my video about that and are quite familiar with it. I, I like it, guys. You know, it's a... So far, so good. Let's just say that. There's nothing that, that I absolutely hate. The only thing I really didn't like was the clip. <clears throat> I haven't taken... Uh, I have taken apart the Swish. Yeah, it's not too bad. Um, <clears throat> I took it apart to, to just clean it and, and maintain it a little bit. And yeah, it was pretty painless. Uh, so, uh, ZT, what do we got here? The Manly Peak. And two more to go. Have not opened the Kaiser Kala yet. This knife is actually for sale. It does have just the slightest bit of blade play, but it's really, really not bad. And finally, whoops, the Benchmade Crooked River. And these are the Rogue Blade Works scales. And, hold on, it's not focusing very well here. Uh, Rogue Blade Works scales and pivot collar, which I've got to say, uh, I really, really like. <laughs> Not the end of the world. That's right. Okay, guys, thanks for watching. I'm going to sign out. Uh, great little conversation with all of you guys. And, and go ahead and comment there down below. Uh, let's see, how do I stop this thing? We'll talk to you soon.